A very good morning and welcome to Asake Online. My name is Siswage Lenshovu and this is The Breakfast Club. With me on the show today, I have Mr. Machoba Nangube and he is the chairperson and board member for Abameli Bamalungelo Avandu and he is here to tell us more about the organization. Welcome Mr. Nangube. A uh, good morning to you. So uh, thank you for having me on your show and a uh, good morning to the, the to your viewers. First of all, maybe you can just find out what does Abameli do? What does your organization do? Well, uh, Abameli do lots of work. Uh, this is informed by the following objectives. Uh, the first objective is that uh, we seek to ensure that there is a observance of the rule of law. Uh, your viewers may wonder what it is uh, that I'm referring to by such a term, it may appear loaded. In simple terms, uh, you know, layman's language. The rule of law, what we are saying is that those who have, who hold a public power, those who bear, you know, uh, or sit in public offices, Whatever they do, they should do uh, uh, it because the law requires them to do or because the law allows them to do. So what we are simply saying is that you do not do anything outside of the law. Okay. And, and how do you ensure that, um, how do you make sure, how do you monitor that the rule of law is observed? Yes. Uh, thank you, Zoa. Uh, so... The other objectives beside the rule of law is the promotion of a, a development of a human rights culture in Zimbabwe and the development of uh, the law, uh, because at times the law lags behind uh, in certain respects in so far as human rights are concerned. We also, uh, 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 one of the objectives is to uh, ensure that the Zimbabwe as a state party to various international uh, uh, bodies uh, ratifies uh, international conventions or treaties uh, that uh, whose prime uh, interest is the protection of human rights. So we do this uh, by uh, availing uh, legal services, human, defending the human rights of the people on the margins of society, that is, you know, children, uh, minorities, uh, the weak, the disabled, uh, anyone who finds themselves on the margins of society, maybe uh, because of uh, sexual orientation and things like that. So we do this by a number of ways. Uh, we, we do civil litigation when necessary. Uh, if engagement fails, I mean, uh, to, uh, to ensure the the, the the protection of a guaranteed right, we do criminal representation in the courts. Uh, uh, as things stand, our lawyers are uh, having the, the trial. They are the trial, the defense uh, trial is in the case of uh, the MRP uh, accused persons who were arrested uh, recently and have been committed to trial. They've gotten them out on bail. Now they are representing them on trial. We also do a civil, a civic education where we go out into the community, speak to people, try to educate them on their rights. Because you see, most people, they think that the rights are given them by the government or by the state, uh, which is wrong. Human rights are cruel to us by virtue that you are born human beings. Uh, human rights uh, uh, are given unto us by God, by virtue of our existence. What the Constitution, what do you see in chapter four of the Constitution is a guaranteeing or a representation of those rights. But otherwise, those rights are inherent in us as human beings. We also do a, a litigation that is a, a public interest litigation or strategic litigation. Public interest litigation is the kind of litigation uh, when we do it and whose result is meant to you know, benefit a lot of people. Recently, as a, by way of an example, we, we sued to the, uh, the uh, Registrar General because if you looked at your passport, 
your passport had the Isindebele language written in a very atrocious manner. And what I'm saying now, I've seen passports, I mean, coming out, uh, which are written in proper Isindebele, because the constitution says uh, uh, there are a number of officially recognized languages. Isindebele is one of those. And when we looked at the passport, we found that the language that was used there was atrocious. It did, it did not represent the language of the people. So we thought it was a violation. So we brought a court action. And I see that uh, the registrar general decided to respond in good measure. And they've corrected, I mean, uh, uh, that atrocity. We also do uh, uh, collaborations and partnerships with other organizations, which also involved in human rights. We also do advocacy where social media pages are quite active, uh, where we, 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 we try and advocate for certain things, uh, you know, uh, putting across, you know, our arguments as to why certain things should be done in a certain manner, why certain rights need to be, uh, 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 you know, protected because somewhere, someone is uh, uh, maybe taking them for granted. So that's primarily in summation what our mail stands for. You mentioned a human rights literacy. From what you, you know, what would you say is the percentage? Is it high? Is it low? Um, in terms of general population, do they know much? Do we know much about the comp uh, constitution and our rights as a people? And why is it important for us as a people to know about our rights and what is enshrined in the constitution? Uh, I'll hazard a guess. I think most of our people, you know, uh, they do not know uh, what is contained in the constitution, this, despite the fact that the constitution has in, been in place for uh, almost uh, eight years now, I, I, yeah, since May 2013. Uh, and despite the fact that, uh, I mean, uh, the people participated uh, in bringing it to the fore, I mean, in the process, in you know, all the views, and also in voting the referendum that then uh, resulted in the constitution coming about. But then what has happened is that there has not been a follow up uh, by uh, lots of us, you know, uh, and also by the state in going to the people, sitting down with them, breaking down, you know, the various provisions in the constitution, for instance, the Bill of Rights itself, which contains a, a number of human rights. I think there are about 77 uh, or 78, I mean, rights that are set out in that Bill of Rights. And uh, you, I mean, uh, you see people being in the streets, I mean, being, people being, uh, you know, harassed, and uh, uh, you and these people appear in court on their own, they are even unable to assert their rights. Uh, that is within the urban setting. You can imagine what the situation is in the countryside. It could be even worse, I want to think, that people are not aware of their rights. So it is critical, it is of critical importance that civil society goes out into the communities, uh, you know, when the, 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 is, the COVID is finally over, or when there's a relaxation, have these small, you know, co a, a groups of people, uh, you know, help them break down the constitution, so that the, especially the Bill of Rights, they are aware, of its provision is of critical importance. I'm going to ask a, another side question. Do you think that the constitution should be part of the school curriculum? Should we start early? Because I think at some point, by the time you try and teach adults, it's a bit late. Is there a way, do you think it should be in our curriculum? And is there a way to get it as part of our mainstream education? That's very true, that's correct. That's what is supposed to happen. What is supposed to happen is uh, that, I mean, those who are uh, the experts, uh, uh, you know, in the uh, constitution have to sit 
together with the experts in the development of the curriculums. I mean, uh, taking into account that uh, certain age groups may uh, be able to absorb certain concepts better than uh, uh, others, you know, uh, so that it is cascaded through a primary school into secondary school, so that at the end of the day, you have an informed society. In fact, the constitution does itself provide that uh, it has to be, uh, there has to be a And aware and awareness of so this is key because people cannot seek to utilize the constitution as a tool within the toolbox of defense of their rights if they do not know what it contains. So it's critical that people need to be taught. Okay. Uh, is there anything, is there any organization, are you doing anything to actually lobby to get the constitution education to be part of our education system? Uh, what we're doing is we're doing our bit, I mean, on social media and, you know, uh, going out into the communities. That was uh, the case before uh, the lockdown. We, we would go out into the communities, sit uh, with the people, uh, talk and discuss the, the contents of the constitution. But what we are speaking to is having this incorporated into the uh, curriculum of the schools. And I think it's critical. I think it's something that we need to, with other civil society organization, uh, uh, we have to come up with a position so that then we are able to approach the Ministry of Education. And then we can, you know, uh, see how we can work together uh, to, to, to bring about. But what we did, I mean, some time back, uh, as human rights practitioners, is we set up uh, human rights clubs in various schools in Ulawayo, in various schools in much north, in material in south, uh, where we, we would then liaising with the, uh, you know, certain teachers, uh, we help uh, create that culture of human rights. You have what we call training of trainers, uh, some uh, school peoples who then would go on to teach uh, their colleagues in schools so that then in this culture but what you're speaking to is even a broader and more formalized uh, way of doing it i i, I think it's a noble uh, uh, issue that you are raising and that we should as not only as our mainly as various civil society organizations working within this space of defending uh, people's rights you know yourself you are involved in an information space because then you have to be able then to take that information so that the people are aware that this is now the situation. So when it's being taught in schools, they know that this is the position. So we have to work on that uh, so that at least we see that the Minister of Education brings it into the curricula. In fact, what it means is that one can even talk, take the government to court, the state to court, the Ministry of Education to say, this is what they should do. This is what the constitution says. They are not following what the constitution says by failing to, uh, you know, uh, have this as part of the curriculum. But it goes further. It has to be taught in other institutions. For instance, the law enforcement uh, agencies of the country, whether it's the intelligence, whether it's the police, whether it's the military, uh, whether it's the prisons, uh, these are the people who have been accused, I mean, uh, uh, of human rights abuses, uh, they need, there is need that uh, as part of their training, as the part of their continuous training, uh, human rights education uh, is part of that. Knowledge of the constitution, it should be a course, it should be a module that they should pass uh, for them to be able to be members of those, I mean, entities. Thank you very much for that insight, Mr. Ngobe. Coming back to Abameli, during the COVID lockdown, how were your activities affected? Yeah, COVID has been a, a difficult time for, for, for all of us uh, because, you know, by the nature of the work that we do, 
we need to go out into the communities, meet the people, discuss with them. Uh, that one-on-one -on -one interaction is so helpful. Uh, people are able to, you know, uh, learn more, you know, not only them, but also us, because we learn from the experiences of the people so that then we are able then to remodel or reimagine uh, the, and repackage the kind of information that is necessary uh, to properly inform the people. <clears throat> so COVID has locked us down. Uh, we have been uh, relegated really to more to social media than anything. Uh, that is where we are most active, but obviously social media is not accessible to the bulk of the people of this country, especially within the marginalized communities, the rural communities, I mean, uh, especially. Yes, the Ebenites uh, do have access, but most people also have the challenges of actually buying data. You'll find that people uh, are better off buying WhatsApp data that allows them to communicate maybe over a week, or over a day without deleting their data uh, than for them to say, we want to go, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, look for a video online that breaks down these things. So it's, it becomes difficult because of the COVID lockdown. Uh, hopefully with this realization, we will take a, a chance to start to reach out to the community. So talking about accessibility, if anybody is in need of your assistance, besides going on social media, is there any other platform? Is there a physical office? Are there any points around the area that people can actually reach out to and access your help? Yes, I mean, people uh, can go to uh, our office. There is an office. Uh, uh, we have an office that does administrative work. Uh, that office of no, is of no assistance to them. Uh, because our main leverage is on the human resources of its members. So there are quite a number of lawyers who are uh, uh, our members, uh, and it is those lawyers that the people should, in fact, approach. Uh, uh, the, the, I, I'll, I'll tell you about the members of the board. Uh, there is Niki Wengube. Uh, she has got her own law, her own law firm, Mube, uh, Chabalala, attorneys. There is Vusiso Mube. Uh, he has got his own law firm, uh, Mube, and partners. Uh, there is uh, uh, Mr. Prince Uche, Mzingaye, uh, uh, Or you're there with the Matuansi, a Nubelo Chamber. But primarily, what they may need to reach out to me. If they reach out to me, I'll, I'll be able to, uh, to assist them. We also have a website. Uh, that we have where people can, if they go to Abameli, they will find the, the, the website of Abameli online. There's lots of information, our contact details, our physical address, uh, you know, and email addresses there. There's also, uh, uh, pardon me, I'd forgotten, Chimumoyo uh, Ndovu. She, she, she is also a board member of Abameli. She is with uh, TJ Mapikwa. Uh, you know, uh, attorneys. So all these people are available, but what they may need to do is to, uh, uh, you know, uh, look at our website, go to offices, uh, and uh, we should be able to assist. Okay. So uh, I, I read that your, your, your organization is primarily made up of members. How does one become a member of, of Abameli? And in the, uh, in the of being on the legal side, on the assisting side, as part of your team? Uh, our membership is divided into two categories, in fact. There is the category of uh, practicing lawyers. Those lawyers are free to reach out to us if they want to be part of us. 
uh, then we'll enter them into our register. They become our members. Uh, what is simple is that they are practicing attorneys. Then uh, we can assign them uh, cases when they come up or put them on standby so that when the need arises, we deploy them. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, pardon for that. Uh, secondly, the other category is that of uh, students, law students. They can also reach out to us. They can, you know, uh, do internships with us. Uh, we should be able to place them around with a number of lawyers so that they have a, a rudimentary appreciation of what uh, being in defense of human rights is so that then they can take along, I mean, for instance, uh, there is a, a, a rapid response where someone has been arrested and then we need to respond to go uh, to their assistance. Uh, they may be try where they may want to sit in and observe what goes on their interviews that are done by the lawyers so that they know what it is that lawyers require from, you know, accused persons when they are preparing for trial or they're preparing for bail uh, and, and, no law, uh, and get to know lots of things really about the law, the practical side of things, because mostly they are doing theoretical part, but uh, then they need to upgrade their knowledge to the practical side of the practice of the law. So as a member of society, um, how do I then access your services? I know you mentioned that there's various lawyers. You just mentioned that if you had a rapid response case, somebody's been arrested. Can I just out of the blue call Avamelu to come assist me? Or do I need to be a member as it were, or join a database or be registered to say Avamelu then defends me? Or is it purely picking up the phone and saying, I need help? Just picking up help. You yourself or your relative, if for instance you're in custody and you are unable to reach us, uh, you know, uh, your relative, your friend, your colleague, uh, or you can even ask a police officer to say, have the numbers that are there on speed dial or saved as, you know, the, the numbers that you need when you, you get into that position of discomfort. Okay. So are your services free for, for the public? Is there a nominal charge? What is the, what is the process? Well, uh, human rights is for free. <laughs> we, 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 we are there to, to, to avail these services to uh, those who need them for free. There's no charge. Is there a hotline number? I'd be interested in actually um, getting that to, across to our viewers. Um, some WhatsApp or a calling number. Yeah, you, you. They can have my number is 0775 299591. That's my number. They can always call me. At any time, uh, if I don't pick up the phone, maybe I'm in court or I'm in a meeting like this, uh, then they can always leave a message. Then I'll certainly get back to them. And, you know, I, I, I do the coordination of, you know, allocation of the legal personnel that needs to attend to them. So they can always get in touch with me on that number. So what can you say have been some of the successes of Amameli during your, your time of, of being in, in existence? Well, I, I think there are quite a number. I mean, we've been uh, involved in a number of cases. The, 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 the other case that I've highlighted to you is the, the, the case involving uh, the, the correction of the language uh, that is in the passports. Uh, I will not comment about the other cases that are pending because that would be improper. Uh, you know, the, the, there is a case that we did in 2014. I think that is key and critical. That is major. That case, uh, uh, we went to the Constitutional Court. I did appear in the Constitutional Court on behalf of three police officers. Uh, uh, they had been held in custody for three days. And yet the constitution says every person has to appear in court within 48 hours. That is from the time of your, your arrest 
to the time of your appearance in court, it has to be less than 48 hours, he wrote. So uh, we went to the Constitutional Court and challenged certain provisions of the Criminal Procedure Evidence Act. And the Constitutional Court struck those uh, uh, you know, uh, provisions because those provisions allowed the police on their own to approach a magistrate so that the magistrate could issue a warrant for further detention. Now that is no longer part of our law. It was struck down by the Constitutional Court. I appeared in that matter, the Constitutional Court. So now people, you see courts sitting on weekends. You see courts sitting during holidays because of that key decision of the Constitutional Court. It is a key decision in that it protects the right to liberty because what the police were doing, they were abusing that power so that they could hold you for a period of 96 hours in total. And if the 96 hours ended during a holiday period, they will still hold you until the holiday was over. Or if it occurred on a weekend, they will wait and the, the, the counting of the hours was suspended and to, uh, to start to uh, uh, commence during a weekday. So what we did with that court matter is that now anyone who has been arrested before 48 hours lapses, uh, you have to bring them to court so that then the court can decide, a neutral arbiter can then decide whether that person is in lawful custody or not. And then if they're not in lawful custody, then they can release you. You can be admitted to bail, or if you know you are denied bail, you can utilize the appeal process you know, to the high court. So that your right to liberty is guaranteed in reality, not only in theoretical terms. So that was a key matter. We've also appeared, I mean, our lawyers have appeared in a number of cases, you know, representing a number of accused persons. Some people were caught up in the, you know, the January disturbances, January 2019 uh, disturbances. And these people had no lawyers, you know, they were being accused of public violence, I mean, being part of demonstrations. Our lawyers did secure uh, acquittals and release of a number of those people. Uh, now, we had Henry, this Twagas, uh, 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 sorry, Twagas Republic Party uh, accused persons, so we are available to uh, assist those who need our assistance. I will not comment about that case before because it's before the court. Uh, the court will decide whether there is a case or not. But some of those cases are key cases that we have done. And we're happy to do more. There are others uh, that, uh, that are under the reps. Uh, we'll let the people know when they've been decided by the courts. Okay. Um, that's amazing. Um, given the, the, especially your 2014 case, so you actually made a landmark, um, you got a landmark ruling because, yeah, I do remember in some cases people would be detained for extended periods of time and you don't even have any idea how and why. And yeah, well, well done on that. What, Thank you. What challenges, on the other hand, have you experienced in carrying out your duties? Well, uh, it wouldn't be a challenge for us because uh, as human rights lawyers, we, we emphasize that there are challenges. You know, when you're fighting for human rights, it has never been easy. It's, it's not a stroll in the park. So uh, any challenges that are put in our way we, we try, I mean, a, a, a ways to go around them, you know, a, on top of them, under them, you know. <laughs> uh, but in essence, I think what we do is we need, uh, it, it's so certain, you know, in some cases where people are needlessly arrested, where clearly there is no case to answer. So our more serious challenge is that the culture of human rights is not permitted, especially into our sacred sector. I think it is necessary that they be trained, that they be conscientized about the rights in the constitution, so that when they do these things, when they engage with the civilian population, they do these things in terms of what the constitution requires them to do. This is where the rule of law issue comes in, to say whatever you do, you cannot keep an accused person. For instance, that you have arrested, you cannot hit them below the feet. 
You cannot torture them because the constitution it says, says you cannot do so. That is the rule of law. So if you're acting outside of the law, so there are cases of impunity where police uh, are alleged to have beaten accused person. And I think that is so wrong. But those are kind of matters that, I mean, we have to take to court so that those kind of officers and rulers, they are approach to account. Machavana, do you have any last words for our viewers as we wind down our interview? Uh, thank you, Cesar. Uh, what I'll say is, I mean, we are available, we are here, uh, we will uh, cover you when you are in a state of order. So get in touch with us. Thank you so much, Mr. Machovana Ngobe, for a very informative discussion on Ava Meji. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Thank you so much for your time. Unfortunately, that's all we have today from Mr. Machovana Ngobe, and he is the chairperson of Ava Meji Wamalungilo Abantu, a human rights championing organization. As he mentioned, do reach out if you do need assistance. Uh, details will be availed on our on our screen and as we mentioned before please do stay safe as well remember to mask up sanitize and maintain your social distance we are going into winter chilly season of the year and it is imperative that we keep ourselves safe that's all for me today my name is Siswagelin Lovud this is the breakfast club and please continue watching Asake online <laughs>